Okay, in this recording I'm going to introduce to you uh, a particular type of variable which is called an integer. You'll be familiar with the integer uh, from math. It means uh, any whole number and it means the same thing in C programming which is helpful. Um, but to explain firstly what a variable is, a variable is, as the name suggests, something that can vary in its value. So we use those uh, these variables in our C programming to hold a number that can change in value. If we use an integer variable it can only change in value to some other whole number or integer value. This is quite useful as you'll see. We'll, we'll uh, do a simple program here in a moment um, just to make it clear exactly what, uh, you know, what a very simple use of it. But what you need to know first of all is that within a C program when we create a variable that takes up some amount of space on our computer and it takes up that space somewhere in RAM. Now specifically and again it's, it's for a, a more detailed lecture at some point it will take up space on what is called the stack. In most cases uh, in your simple C programs you don't really need to worry about where it's created it. A lot of the C program we'll be doing in, in this first half of the year or more will all be for the PC. Uh, and on a PC we generally have lots and lots of memory even though we complain about not having enough when uh, certain programs don't run. However, when it comes to dealing with embedded systems, one of the, the differences between that and writing a program for a, a PC is that you have very little resources available to you. So you've got very little RAM you've got very little ROM and you often don't have a huge amount of processor power uh, and that's all to save costs in order to, in order to make some small device. In cases like that you need to know something about the different types of variables that you use, how much space they take up and whether it's appropriate to be using that type of variable. So to get started um, I will open my C programming software and start a new file. Again, just like all others, I'm uh, going to make my standard uh, C file with hash include stdio.h, int main void, and so on. I'm going to pause the video while I write that so that it's not taking up your time. Okay, so there I have uh, that section of the program written, and we're now going to look at introducing some variables. To introduce an integer variable, we need to use a keyword called int. Now, you'll notice as soon as I type int, it goes uh, into a dark or a, a bold print. Okay, That's because this is a keyword and, it, and the C programming uh, environment here recognizes it as a keyword. There are actually only 32 keywords in C, so in matter of fact it's a very very small language from that point of view. Now when you create a variable you should give it an appropriate name. Because this is very much an introductory lecture to the variables themselves, the name we give it here will just be num1. If you were, let's say, for example, dealing with um, some information that you were counting, like counting a number of items, you might call that int count. Okay. If you were dealing with the height of a building, you might call that int height or int height of building. In doing so, you make it very clear to people what that variable does. As I said, in this case, we're really dealing with the very fundamentals of it, so there is no appropriate name to give it. Sometimes people have a tendency to say things like int x and that's what you would do in mathematics if you want to have a variable for something but the trouble is uh, with larger programs you start using x, y, z and then you start using different letters maybe k, l, m and so on and when anybody else comes to look at your program it doesn't make any sense to them they don't know what those variables are doing so always better if you can give it an appropriate name to the action that it's carrying out so what have I done in this case? Well, I've said I've given it a name num1. I could call it anything I want, but I'm giving it a name num1, and I've said it's an integer variable. I put a semicolon at the end. You'll have noticed, or you'll have picked up as I go along, that semicolons go at the end of every statement within C. There are some situations where we don't put it, but we have to replace it with something else, and we'll be seeing that much later on. Oftentimes when you create a variable you might want to inform other programmers or other people that are going to read it uh, what they are for. So you can put in these things called comments. Um, so I'm going to 
say um, something very simple because again this is fundamental stuff so uh, this holds an integer okay now if I put this slash asterisk here and a slash asterisk or an asterisk slash in the other direction um, or in the in the in the opposite order at this end that causes the writing to go in a kind of uh, italic format and what that tells us is that the compiler when it comes to that will completely ignore it and it won't try to actually execute that okay so it's just a comment for anybody that's reading the program now I'm going to create three of these variables num2 and int num3 as I mentioned each one of these takes up a little bit of space how much space it takes up depends on the environment that we're in. On these PCs, as far as I know, it takes up uh, 4 bytes. There's a way of actually testing that, um, and one of the programs that I'll be getting you to do as exercises in the next week or so, uh, probably two weeks, um, will actually uh, test how big um, these things are, and how large of a number they can hold. So, as far as I know on these ones, they actually hold 4 bytes, uh, which Oh, sorry, something started coming on there in the background. Okay, sorry about that. I, I don't know whether that got picked up in your recording there, but something had hopped up on my screen from a previous recording and it just started running. Okay, so we have three numbers, and as I said, uh, as far as I know, on this particular system, they take up four bytes of space. So if you were dealing with uh, an embedded system like the 8051, they would normally take up two bytes. But even two bytes is a huge amount of space on the 8051, so in many cases you may try and go another route in order to try and take up less space, particularly if you didn't need that much. Again, as I said, there's one of the exercises that I'm going to get you to do in the next week or two that um, informs you a little bit more about uh, what, a what these variables can hold and what they can't, what are their limitations. Okay, but we'll be coming back to that later. So we have three integers, and I'm going to put uh, numbers into them. So they're variables, so I can put whatever number I want into them. So number one, I'm going to put the number five into it. Now, one thing I want you to try and get used to is actually saying what's written on your screen or when you're typing it. So this is num1 is assigned the number five. Okay, so the variable num1 is assigned the value five. Notice I didn't say equals okay that is an equal sign that you would use in mathematics but when it's used in C programming it doesn't mean equals and you shouldn't say equals when you're saying it in your head it's assigned so in other words it's given the value or it's loaded up with the value 5 now I'm going to put another number number 2 uh, I'm going to put uh, the value 7 in there Now, number three, I'm going to do something slightly different with it. I'm going to say that it is assigned num1 plus num2. Okay. So, remember, uh, going back to our previous things, that our main function starts at the first opening brace. It will execute this, which will ask the, uh, the compiler, effectively, to give us some uh, space or some memory for a variable called num1 and it's an integer variable so it will take up a certain size and it will hold certain types of numbers, mainly whole numbers. It will also ask us to create num2 which again must give us another 4 bytes of, of space for that uh, again it will hold integers and then num3 the exact same thing. What we then do is we ask it to uh, load the space or the memory that, uh, that num1 is associated with, we want it to load it with the number 5 we want to load the number 7, or assign the value 7 into number 2. And then what we want to do is we want to add together num1 and num2, the values in those, add them together. That will result in a number, and if you look at it there you can see that it will result in the number 12, 5 and 7 together will no result in the number 12. So that all becomes equal to the number 12, and the value, or number 12, gets assigned to num3, so there's space there for it to go into. Now. Uh, I want you to have a think to yourself while I'm saving because I haven't saved this file and I should have done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that file and I want you to have a think to yourself what is this program going to actually do what's going to happen on the screen so uh, I'm going to call this um, let me just change to .c here so that I can see what ones I have uh, I'm going to call this 
with simple integer. Okay. Now, many of you may think that we're going to in some way see the number 12 or something come up on the screen here. Uh, that's actually not what's going to happen. I'm going to click compile and run here. And you'll notice that all it says is press any key to continue. Uh, which, as we saw before, uh, comes from this system pause function. So it didn't print the number 12, despite the fact we thought we had done that in the program. Now the reason for that is that the 12 has, I can assure you, gone into number 3. But the problem is that we haven't reported that in any way. In other words, the program knows that the number 12 is in there in, num in, in num3. It knows that the number 5 is in in num1 and the number 7 is in in num2. But we haven't reported that. We haven't sent that information to the screen. If we want to send it to the screen, we have to use a library function from up here, which uh, is stdio.h, standard input output. And if you recall, that was called the printf function. Now, uh, I did say in previous uh, lectures that I'm going to explain the printf function in detail. That'll be um, after I do another two or three of these when you've got used to seeing the different types of them. So again, one or two things are going to get introduced here which won't be fully explained. Printf. Uh, and what I'm going to say is uh, percent %d. Now the percent %d stands for, uh, the d stands for decimal. So I'm going to say num3. Now, without going into massive detail, what occurs is that when it sees this percent sign, it checks the letter after it and it sees that it's a D, so it knows it's expecting an integer. Okay. It'd be nicer if uh, if the convention was to use the letter I there, and in fact you can on most compilers use the letter I, um, but the convention seems to be for a letter D. Uh, you, so the convention seems to be for a letter D, uh, so I want you to get used to that because that seems to be what everybody else uses. Now, what will occur is that the value in num3 will then be taken from there and inserted in there instead. So I'm just going to run that quickly. And we see that the number 12 has come out. If I want to do several of these, I can say percent d plus percent d equals percent d. And what I then have to do is put these in order that I want them to go in. I want num1 going in the first place, I want num2 to go in, in the second place, and then num3 to go in, in the third position. So that's the first position, second position, and third position. We'll run that, and you can see 5 plus 7 equals 12. If I accidentally leave one of these out, like that one there, you can see that 5 plus 7 equals a very, very large number. Now what has occurred there is this is looking for an integer, but I haven't told it what integer is to go in there, what variable is to go in there. So it's picked the next place in memory, and whatever crazy number happens to be in there, that's what will go in. So again, I'm going to change that back to num3, and we'll see the correct output. Now, uh, one of the exercises that you're asked to do is to, to try several different um, operators here, right? so arithmetic operators. So we've done the plus one here, but one of the ones, or the different ones we wanted to check out are the minus, the multiply, which is a star symbol, there's the divide symbol, and then there's another symbol there which looks like a percentage but doesn't do uh, anything to do with uh, a percentage at all. So one of the exercises that you're going to have to do is to try out each of those in a program very similar to this uh, and see what they all do and see how they all operate. So that's one of the exercises that's open to you. Um, what I will do uh, down the line after you've done those exercises and submitted them is that I will do a quick recording uh, where I will actually do those exercises as well and just explain to you what has happened in each case and why it has happened. Okay, But for the moment uh, that just introduces you to the integer variable and how you create them.